Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. iOS 18 has been out for a little while now, and it's brought the biggest customization update we've ever seen on iPhone. From freely placing app icons wherever you want on the screen, to theming all your app icons with a uniform color. The possibilities are endless. But with all these new options, I've noticed there's a lot of confusion on how to actually customize your iPhone. So in this video, I'm breaking down everything you need to know on how to customize your lock screen, home screen, control center, and more. This one's going to be a little bit longer than usual, so I'll make sure to add some chapters so you can go straight to the section you need or follow along step by step. Let's dive right into it. To start off, you can now change your lock screen controls. For years, you could only have the flashlight or the camera shortcuts here at the bottom. But in iOS 18, you can finally swap them out for other options or remove them completely. To customize your lock screen controls, long press on the lock screen, then tap on customize, then select lock screen. You'll see the option to delete the current controls. Just tap on the minus icon to delete them. A plus icon will appear. Just tap on it to add a new control. You can search for a control or scroll down through the list to find the one that fits your needs. For example, I like discovering new music, so I'm going to replace the camera shortcut with the Shazam for quick music recognition. If you prefer a more minimalistic look, you can delete both of the controls so your lock screen only shows the time and date. While we're here, let's talk about customizing the top section of the lock screen. Starting from the top, you can tap on the date to customize what's displayed. There aren't a ton of options, but if you have, let's say, multiple meetings throughout the day or events throughout your day, you can set it to show upcoming events. This will give you a compact view, showing you an abbreviation of the date along with your selected widget. For example, in this case, it displays both the date and my upcoming events at a glance. Now let's talk about customizing the clock. Just tap on the time display to bring up your customization options. You can change the font by selecting from the different styles, adjust the width of the numbers using the slider from thinner to thicker, and you can pick a new color by tapping one of the presets here at the bottom. Now, if you want a custom color, just swipe all the way down and you'll see this icon right here. Just tap on it. Here you can select any color you want. Let's say red and we exit. And then finally, you can use the opacity slider to fine tune your shade. Moving on, you can add widgets for quick access to useful information. Tap on the widget section. You can then scroll through the available widgets to find the one you use the most. For example, if you like tracking your fitness rings, just tap on the fitness and you can either have a compact one or a more detailed view. So this is your compact one and then this one's more detailed. Depending on the widgets you choose will determine how many widgets you can add. If you add all compact widgets, you can add up to four widgets at a time. Once you're happy with your setup, tap on done and your customized lock screen is ready to go. And while we're here, let's talk about how to change your wallpaper. Because in iOS 18, the process has changed just a bit. Once again, to get started, tap and hold on your lock screen and now swipe left until you see a plus icon. Just tap on it. Here you'll see a variety of wallpaper options, including personal photos, a shuffle of those photos, live photos, emojis, you name it. You will also see weather dynamic backgrounds that reflect live weather conditions and a full collection of Apple pre-made designs with different themes. Once you find a wallpaper you like, just tap on it and then tap on add. Now you get the option to set the wallpaper for both your lock screen and your home screen, or if you prefer a different wallpaper for your home screen, Tap Customize Home Screen. At the bottom, you'll see several options to customize your home screen wallpaper. Pair uses the same wallpaper for both the lock screen and the home screen. You can set it to a single color, sets a solid color as your background. You can also set it to a gradient, creates a smooth transition from one shade to another, and you have the option to add a photo. Just lets you select an image from your photo library. That's the worst picture I could have chosen, but we're just gonna go with it. And then you'll see blur. It applies a blur effect on your chosen wallpaper. Just a heads up, the blur effect won't work if you select a color or a gradient as your wallpaper option. Once you've selected the options you want, just tap on done and then tap on your wallpaper to apply it. One of the best parts of iOS 18 customization is that all your different lock screens and home screen setups are saved unless you delete them. 
So if you need a more professional setup for work, you can switch to that. And then when you're off and you want something a little bit more playful, you can quickly swap back and forth. So what I mean by that, it's like, let's say you're at work and you have your weather, but then let's say you're off and you like fish. So you switch over to this. If you ever want to delete a setup, just tap and hold on the lock screen, then swipe up on the preview and tap on the trash can icon. It'll ask you to confirm, just tap on delete this wallpaper and it's gone. Now let's move on to customizing the home screen in iOS 18. If you long press anywhere on the screen, you'll see the app start to wiggle. This is the same as before, but now there's a new edit button here on the top left corner. And tapping on it brings up three different options. Add widget, customize, and edit pages. Let's go over them one by one. The first option is add widgets. Just tap on it, and here you can see a search for widgets. Add one of the recommended ones at the top, and you can scroll down to see all the apps that support widgets. For example, if you want to keep a closer eye on all your battery levels for your accessories, you can add the battery widget. Most widgets come in three different sizes, two by two, like the small widget, a one by four, a wide widget, and a list view widget, which, uh, which has all your devices here. Once you select the one you prefer, just tap on add. I'm gonna go with the two by two. It will drop it onto your home screen. It helps to be on the page where you want the widget to go, but if you're not, you can simply drag it and drop it anywhere. Once you've found your preferred location, just let it go and then tap on done. Next, let's talk about the customize option. Once again, tap and hold on the home screen, tap on edit, and then finally tap on customize. A pop-up menu will appear here at the bottom of your screen, allowing you to tweak app icon size, color, and wallpaper brightness. To adjust the wallpaper brightness, you can tap on the sun icon here to darken your wallpaper. Tap it again to return it to normal. This doesn't affect the brightness of your app icon, so darkening the wallpaper can actually help the app's icon stand out. Personally, I think it makes the layout look super clean, so I like it to be darker. The next option is app icon size, and there's two options. Small is simply just the default size, and the second option is large. This enlarges the app icons, but it does remove the app name and folder names. If you prefer a cleaner look, the large icons without the names might be for you. But for me, I prefer having the app names visible, so I'll stick to small. The final customization option you'll see is app icon color and shade. You'll have four different options. Light, which is just a default color. Dark, changes all your icons to a dark mode color. Personally, I don't like dark icons during the day, so I wouldn't use this option. However, this is where the next option comes in handy. It's automatic. So if your phone switches into light mode during the daytime, your app icons will adjust to the light setting. And then if it goes into dark mode during the night, your icons will then switch to a dark mode color. The last option you see on here is tinted. And this lets you pick a custom color for your app icons. By default, iOS will recommend a color based on your wallpaper, but you can adjust that color by dragging this first slider right here to any color that you would like. You can then adjust the shade slash opacity using this second slider right here. And then finally, there is a color drop icon so you can just tap on it and drag it anywhere on your wallpaper to match a specific color. Once you've set everything to your liking, just tap on the middle of the screen and that's it, you're done. The last option on here is edit pages. And if you have multiple pages of apps and find yourself constantly swiping through several screens to reach the apps you actually use, this feature makes it much easier to organize your layout. Instead of rearranging individual apps, you can move entire pages closer to your main screen or even set it as the new default home page. So once again, tap and hold on the home screen, then tap on edit, and then you'll tap on edit pages. You'll see your existing pages displayed as thumbnails, and you can drag them and rearrange them any way you want. You can also disable pages by just tapping on the check mark. And you can also delete entire pages by disabling them first and then tapping on the minus sign. You will be asked to confirm that you want to remove the page. Just tap on remove. This will not delete the apps on your page as they will still be available in your app library. Once you're happy with the layout, just tap on done. 
This is super useful if you want to quickly access the most used apps without having to reorganize them one by one. It's a faster way to get your layout just right. Now let's talk about app placement in iOS 18. You finally have more flexibility when it comes to arranging the app icons. You can long press on the home screen to enter wiggle mode, and now you can move the apps anywhere you want, but there's some limitations. The apps are still locked to a four by six grid, so you can't place them completely freely. You can move your icons to one side of the screen like you see here, or you can arrange them at just the top, let's say like maybe like this, and you can leave gaps in between apps as many as you want. So you can leave gaps in rows and then the columns. Uh, and obviously if you wanted a more cleaner look, you can line them up. This is a huge improvement for users who love minimalistic layouts or want to show off their wallpapers without the icons covering the best parts. One of the coolest things about iOS 18 customizations is that your home screen layout syncs with your wallpaper settings. So if you go back to a wallpaper and you have changes, your app icon color settings will automatically go back to that adjustments you made with that specific wallpaper. For example, if you had tinted app icons on one wallpaper, switching it to a different wallpaper will bring back its own customized icon tint instead of resetting everything. Just keep in mind that you have to make multiple profiles for those wallpapers. This makes it super easy to switch between different home screen setups, maybe one for work, like I mentioned earlier, and then another for personal time without having to redo everything from scratch. In my opinion, this is one of the best features in iOS 18. So this is kind of what I was talking about. Let's say on this wallpaper, I have the light icons, but then if I switch over to my other wallpaper, you know if I can get it to work, here we go. We switch over to my other wallpaper and on this one, I have the dark icons. Going back to widgets real quick, if you already have some widgets on your home screen and want to make changes, you don't have to delete and re-add them from scratch. Here's how you can edit them easily. Tap and hold on the widget you want to modify, and a pop-up menu will appear with options. You can adjust the widget size to any of the options it supports. Let's go full page here, or the list view. If a particular widget has options, you can edit the widget and you can change like your location for your weather. So you can modify the settings or the information display within that widget. And last, you also have the option to remove the widget. Another way to resize widget is by putting your iPhone into wiggle mode. Tap and hold on an empty spot on your home screen. Once in wiggle mode, you'll find a resize slider on the bottom right corner of the widget. Drag the slider to readjust the size. So maybe we want to make it the wide one, or maybe you want to make it a bigger one. Just drag the slider to adjust the size to your preference, and then just tap on done when you're finished. This makes customizing your widgets faster and more convenient, allowing you to fine tune your layout without having to re-add everything manually. And that's how you can go from something like this to something more like this. Now, if you tap and hold on an app, you'll see a menu pop up with a bunch of quick options. These vary depending on the app, but what's new in iOS 18 is the ability to lock and hide apps using Face ID for an extra layer of security. Here's how it works. Just tap and hold on the app you want to lock, select Require Face ID from the menu, and you'll see two options. The first one is Require Face ID. The app remains on the home screen, but you'll need to authenticate with Face ID every time you want to open it. The second option, hide and require face ID will make the app disappear from the home screen and move it to a hidden app folder in the app library. You'll need face ID to access that folder. Here's some things to know. Hidden apps will not send you notifications or alerts, so you won't see badges, banners, or previews. You can still access hidden apps anytime by going to the app library and unlocking the hidden app folders with face ID. This is great if you want to keep certain apps private while still having access when needed. Now, one of the biggest updates in iOS 18 when it comes to customization is Control Center. It's been completely redesigned, giving you more flexibility than ever before. Previously, if you wanted to customize the Control Center, you had to navigate into settings, and even then, all you could really do is add, remove, and rearrange controls in a fixed order. But now everything is much more intuitive and customizable directly within Control Center itself. Here's what's new. You can rearrange your controls any way you like, 
resize controls to small, medium, or large to better suit your needs, and add new controls by tapping on the plus icon and choosing from a list of available controls. To add a new control, simply open Control Center and tap on the plus icon. Then tap on Add Control. You can use the search bar to find a specific control or scroll through a list of recommended and available controls. Tap on the control you want and it'll be added instantly. Let's just go ahead and tap on Text Size. And depending on the control that you added, you can choose from different sizes. You can also rearrange and resize your controls. Once you're in edit mode by tapping the plus icon, you can tap and hold any controls to drag it to a new position. If you see a resize slider at the bottom, that means you can resize the control, just like how you resize the widgets on the home screen. You can even turn some controls into full pages and have multiple pages on the control center, making it easier to organize everything based on your personal preferences. On the other side of the plus icon, you'll notice a new power button. This lets you turn off your iPhone without having to do the typical volume up, volume down, and then power button combo. However, this caused some confusion because most people just tap it on it once and, well, nothing happens. Here's the trick. Tap and hold on the power icon, then release it, and then the slide to power off bar will appear. This level of customization makes Control Center more useful and personalized than ever before. So that pretty much wraps it up for all the new ways you can customize your iPhone and iOS 18. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss more iOS 18 tips. I'll catch you in the next one.